Even in laughter, the heart may sorrow, and the end of mirth may be grief. The backslider in heart will be filled with his own ways, but a good man will be satisfied from above. My name is Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we meditate and share together these two Proverbs from chapter 14 of Proverbs, verses 13 and 14. The heart is that secret place in you. People hear what you say, they see what's on your face, but only God knows the heart. And Jeremiah reminds us that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? We can get a glimpse of what's in the heart, though, from what the mouth speaks. If we listen to what a person says over a period of time, for Jesus told us, out of the heart the mouth speaks, and that it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out of his mouth that defiles him. And James talked about the fact that if you have a spring of water, out of it you either get fresh water or salt water. It doesn't produce both. And so our mouth, reflecting our heart, should be consistent. But so often it brings forth blessing and cursing. Unfortunately, our mouth is not consistent because sometimes we speak nice words, but the heart is in sorrow or in grief or is somewhere else. But in an unguarded moment, our mouth will speak what is in the heart. And so, even in laughter, the heart may sorrow, and the end of mirth may be grief. A person can put on a good front, but that can be just masking what's going on inside. Because joy of heart has to come from above, that is, from God himself. You can't make your heart joyful just by giving yourself exciting circumstances. And that's what many people do. To escape what's in their heart, they try and do something. Maybe it's alcohol, maybe it's drink, maybe it's entertainment, maybe it's doing some scary thing or exciting thing having a party, burying themselves in work. But in the midst of all these things, the heart remains as it is. And if it is in sorrow and not in peace, then it will remain grieved. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, Moses went up on the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments and to be with God. And he was away for six weeks. Well, that seemed a terribly long time. And the children of Israel were grieving for Egypt, for the things that they'd known in Egypt. They'd complained bitterly to God about their experience in Egypt for 80 years. But now that they were taken out of Egypt, they wanted to go back. That was all they knew. The sad reality of the backward look is that everything gets out of perspective. Our memory is selective. We don't remember the bad things, we just remember the good things. And so people speak of the good old days. But the good old days were in fact generally not good at all. We just remember a few good things that happened because life is a mixture of good and evil. And so they were remembering the leeks and the onions. They were remembering one aspect of life in Egypt and forgetting all the sorrow, all the labour, all the hardship, the fact that they were not free, but they were slaves. While Moses was away, their heart turned back to Egypt, and they decided to have one of the feasts that they were familiar with from Egypt, to worship a golden calf. They gathered together some gold and fashioned the calf, and then they had a great party. They sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play, dancing, singing, and who knows what else they were doing, to try and lift their spirits, to take their hearts somewhere else. But it all ended in grief. They were not going back to Egypt. God would not allow them to go back to Egypt. 
God would have destroyed them all, but Moses interceded. But when he came into the camp and saw the golden calf, his anger became hot. He cast the tablets of stone from his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. He took the calf that they'd made and burned it with fire and ground it to powder and scattered it on the water and made the children of Israel drink it. And when he saw that the people were unrestrained, the King James Bible says naked, Moses stood at the entrance of the camp, Who's on the Lord's side? Come to me. The sons of Levi gathered to him. And he said, Let every man put his sword on his side and go in and out from entrance to entrance throughout the camp, and let every man kill his brother, every man his companion, and every man his neighbour. So the sons of Levi did. And Moses said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, that he may bestow on you a blessing, for every man has opposed his son and his brother. And then Moses pleaded with the Lord that the Lord forgive them and not destroy them. These people were looking for satisfaction. They didn't find it in their God. They found it even less in the golden calf. The day ended in grief. You can't manufacture joy. It has to come from inside. The fruit of the Spirit, Paul tells us, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, meekness, self-control. When the Spirit comes into a person, then the Spirit produces peace and joy. Jesus spoke to the woman of Samaria. She'd come to draw water. He asked for some water. She was surprised that a Jew would speak to a Samaritan woman and commented on that. And Jesus said, well, if you knew who I was, you'd ask me for some water, and I'd give you living water. But you don't have a bucket. You can't get the water, because this well is deep. Where are you going to get water from? Are you greater than Jacob who gave us this well? Whoever drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I will give shall never thirst. The water that I shall give shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. She said, give me that water, so I don't have to come out to this well and draw. So Jesus said, get your husband. Don't have a husband. No, you've had five, and now you're living with someone to whom you're not married. Oh, I see you're a prophet. You Jews say we should worship in Jerusalem. But this place is where Jacob worshipped. He dug this well. It has much greater antiquity than Jerusalem. But Jesus said, The day is coming when it will not be here or there. The Father looks for those who will worship him in spirit and truth. She was not winning in her arguments with Jesus. So she said, when Messiah comes, he will tell us the answer. To which Jesus replied, I am he. And so she went into town declaring, is this not the Messiah? The point was that in encountering Jesus, she was going to have that deep-seated need of satisfaction in her life met. Every heart has that desire for something deep and we try and fill that hollow with all kinds of entertainment, mirth, work and engagement. But the only thing that will satisfy is in fact the Holy Spirit and the only way to get that Holy Spirit is to receive it as the water of life from the Lord Jesus Christ. The backslider in heart will be filled with his own ways, Solomon says, but a good man will be satisfied from above. The person who is not walking with the Lord is all the time looking for something to satisfy him, to make him feel worthwhile, to fill his life with meaning, but end up realising they have spent their life chasing the wind. They have achieved nothing. It's all been taken away. They might have had a nice house. They might have had a nice family. Jesus' answer was, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added to you. The promise of Jesus, Everyone who thirsts, come to me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. This he spoke of of the Spirit, which they that believe in him should receive. Even in laughter the heart may sorrow, 
and the end of mirth may be grief.